So Emily, what is on your radar? Well, while the Bowtie class debates Section 230, one of the most powerful companies in human history is plotting to trap us in virtual reality. And I actually mean that literally. In the last couple of weeks, you may have noticed some of your apps were suddenly stamped with Meta, where Facebook used to be. Or maybe you caught the memes of Mark Zuckerberg's weird rollout video announcing that Meta was his company's new name because the metaverse is his company's new primary focus. To be clear, Zuckerberg is rapidly positioning himself to be the world's largest landlord. He's using the same utopian language he used to convince everyone, himself included, that Facebook would be a global force for good 15 years ago. The difference is that now we know he wields his power to make us angrier, lonelier, dumber, less healthy, and more addicted. He's been tested, and he has failed. So back in July, Zuckerberg expounded on his plans for the metaverse in a deeply disturbing interview with The Verge. Now that same month, Sheryl Sandberg explicitly revealed that Facebook's hope is that one day people will host religious services and virtual reality spaces as well, or use augmented reality as an educational tool to teach their children the story of their faith. Quote, faith organizations and social media are a natural fit because fundamentally both are about connection, said Sandberg. Major churches like Hillsong reportedly worked with Facebook on this during the pandemic, or Meta, I should say. Note again that Meta is cloaking its new technology in the very same language. Facebook was pitched to us in the mid-aughts. This fuzzy, abstruse technology will connect us, they say, and that connection will be wonderful. We now know this presumption was naive and destructive, so the oligarchical plan to transfer more of our lives onto their platforms should be regarded as nothing short of emergency. Worship is just one aspect of everyday life Meta wants us to substitute for virtual reality, monetizing nearly everything we do with deliberately addictive and divisive technology. Zuckerberg and Sandberg may be high on their own supply, but their motivations are hardly pure. The more time we spend using Meta, the more money and power they amass. They are cynically positioning themselves as basically the real estate kingpin, pin, kingpins of the future because they want to be the global landlord of every church and gym and office space. These are all things they want you to do all day on Meta. The more time people spend in the metaverse, the more value virtual property will have. It's not just about the money either. Their control over virtual spaces will give them more control over our human experience and our culture. They're talking about controlling the churches. Now, who is their major competitor right now? Physical reality? Well, I guess that's a pretty solid competitor while we're still there. We're still learning also about social media's chemical addictiveness, so I won't argue the research is totally conclusive. I also won't argue the research on social media's effect on our brains is conclusively negative. But there is, however, compelling evidence that social media companies intentionally design their products in ways that hurt us. This is very serious. Mark Zuckerberg wants to normalize VR worship and VR everything, because the more time we spend in his metaverse, the more money he makes and the more control troll he has. Zuckerberg has spent 15 years proving he's a terrible steward of money and power. We've run the experiment and Facebook failed. We cannot cede more of our lives to this company. Tech boosters, including Robbie, with whom I've had many good faith debates on the subjects, uh, on the subject, assures us that all other uh, this is all another moral panic, the likes of which we've seen at least since the printing press, since the wristwatch, since the novel, since the radio. It's old, they say. But all of those technologies, even the printing press, are actually relatively new. In the scope of human history, all of this is extremely new, all of this. The last several hundred years are a blip, let alone the last 15 years of the smartphone revolution. These technological advancements have been incredible for civilization, and civilization has always had new technologies. Post-printing press, we're seeing technologies that are very different. It doesn't mean that technologies will always amount to advancements, and it certainly doesn't mean we should give Meta and Zuckerberg and Sandberg more control over these over more and more moments of our daily lives. So right now, there's no reason for people to be in the metaverse for email or text messaging or social media. So the metaverse is still pretty easy to escape. But think about email and text messages. Even think about beepers. This tech will be quickly adopted by employers and churches and other institutions because we've been convinced that efficiency is actually efficient, that turning humans into floating avatars makes them the best, most 
most productive versions of themselves. It's a trap, just like Twitter and Instagram and email. I'm not saying it's impossible for us to figure out a way to use this remarkable technology responsibly with healthy norms that balance the good and the bad. But I'm definitely saying we've only gone downhill so far, and the people who pushed us now have a whole lot of money. Earlier versions of tech have also conditioned young people to live so comfortably they adopt risk-averse risk -averse lifestyles that are free of danger but also free of real pleasure. Uh, this is material free of, uh, beyond sort of material comfort, uh, pleasure that's beyond material comfort. And with all of that safety and efficiency, we know they're increasingly miserable. The cure, of course, is not to make them more comfortable in their misery. And as the proverbial frogs in a boiling pot, their expectations for life are perfect right now for Meta to capitalize on. So if companies and churches and schools start heavily integrating VR into their business, swayed by Zuckerberg's lofty promises of connection and convenience, that could change very quickly, and it could bring society along with it. Facebook crept up on us quickly the first time, fueled by naive, technocratic, utopian visions. That process is happening again right now and right under our noses. Ren, I think there's, in, in the modern mind, this conflation uh, or this assumption that all technology um, is equals an advancement. So technology is progress. And I think we're probably at the point in the history of modern technology, you know, we're 15 years in smartphones, that we have to say, actually, that might not be true. Yeah, yes. I, and, and I think, you know, if, if the technology fuels uh, kind of a social collapse mm -hmm. and you know, tears at the, the, the threads of society, makes it difficult for people to come together as, as, as a community to advocate for, you know, what, what, they, what they need. Uh, and it, uh, you know, and it leaves people as miserable, as you pointed out, like, you know, spiking levels of depression and anxiety, then you do have to start asking, you know, what, what the purpose of it is. Mm -hmm. So what can what 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 ought to be done about this? Yeah, I think people need to. That's why I, I focus a lot on the sort of promises that Zuckerberg and Sandberg, Sheryl Sandberg, are making here, it's saying that like this is great. It's going to bring us forward. It's going to bring us closer. It's going to make life easier and happier. Um, I think people need to understand as consumers, that's not the case. As users of technology, that's not the case. And be really, we all have to be better users of technology. And employers, um, that means employers need to be, as employees, that needs to be a clear line um, so that employers don't start adapting this kinds of technology. There are all kinds of legislative things and legal things to think about, but just as in our day-to-day -day lives, it needs to be very clear that if, if somebody tries to say, we're going to start doing meetings in this VR headsets that Facebook has bought for us, uh, mm -hmm. that Meta has bought for us, no. Um, teachers need to keep them out of their classrooms. Uh, that it's, it's already, I mean, this is something Amazon is dealing with in, in really serious ways, not the metaverse, but this sort of stepping stone to it where they can track everything. That's one of the biggest complaints mm -hmm. in Bessemer is that people felt like little widgets. That right. They're just like another... Uh, uh, spec on the computer screen, right? And so, if uh, you know, if an employee is wearing one of these devices, then their boss could know ev every single thing they're doing at all times. Right? Yeah, I'm sure. And I mean, uh, don't some companies already haven't they already used wearables and like adopted mm -hmm. wearable technology? I mean, and I know Amazon so you um, have faster typing and right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. Um, and this stuff is all happening really quickly. And so I think you, uh, sort of outside of the legislative realm, our cultural norms are even more powerful and we shape those. Like that's the good right. news is that no matter what Zuckerberg and Sandberg try to do, and they have a ton of power to force these on employers and employees and to force them into school and into churches, um, they have a lot of power, but we can still sort of say... Why into churches? So people can just stay home and yeah. pretend they're in church? Yeah, and it'll be pitched, and this was over COVID, but it'll be pitched as, you know, this brings you know, people who can't get there who are disabled. Like It'll be pitched in, like, very virtuous terms, um, but we need to be aware that when that happens, that normalizing it for everyone, there's a reason that we're more anxious and more depressed as we're more sedentary and as we're more in phones, and it's because it's not how humans are meant to live. The new Brett Weinstein and Heather Hying book is excellent on this. Um, it's not how we're meant to live. And our bodies haven't adapted to these, this sort of condition that we live in in, in the modern world. So it, it, we need to really be serious about that and, and sort of hit the brakes. 
You should maybe strip all that broadband funding out of the <laughs> yes. Build Back Better Act. <laughs> yeah. ne never mind. The internet was a mistake. <laughs> anyway, Team Rising joins us next.